Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, I had a voice radio, so today we are taking another look at Turtonator. Because I think when the new set Burning Shadows becomes legal for tournament play in just a couple of weeks' time, I think Turtonator could be very very good indeed so let's start off by having a look at the old exploding turtle 190 hp is on the very very high end of basic gx's only really lapras up there with him and three good attacks we've also got a weakness to water there which could be an issue with lapras alola ninetales greninja etc but the theory here is you're going to be getting ko so easily it doesn't really matter now, Shell Trap is a decent attack, double colorless energy, 20 damage, and if Turtonator gets hit next turn, you put 8 damage counters on the attacking Pokemon, and that can be really, really handy for non-GXs. So, I don't know, take a silly example, something like a Zoroark. Zoroark has 100 HP, you do 20 with Shell Trap. If they go and hit you back, they take 8 damage counters and are knocked out. So even though you're using a GX Pokemon that gives up 2 prizes, you're keeping the prize race in your favour. You're keeping up in the prize race. Yay! Etc. Now, that's not what we really love about Turtonator, but more on that in a minute. As for the GX attack here, one fire energy, and you get to attach five fire energy from your discard to your Pokemon in any way that you like. As a quick ruling side note, burning energy only counts as a fire when attached, so you cannot attach burning energy in this way. Good Nice recovery in the mid to late game, but that's not what we really like about Turtonator. What we really like about Turtonator is Bright Flame. 160 for free energy, discard 2 fire energy. Annoyingly, because it is discard 2 fire, you cannot just attach a double colorless energy and discard that every turn, as you can do with Alolan Ninetales' Blizzard Edge, because it's fire energy, not energy. And we like this attack because of the numbers. 160 means you add a choice band and it goes up to 190. All basic GXs, even things like Lapras, will go down to that 190 hit. Very nice. You then add a Professor Kakui, you can go up to 210 and get stage 1 GXs. But that's not what we are going to be doing. More on that in a moment. Although, if you haven't guessed it already, it's, it's Volcanian EX. Now, also, one very important thing about Turtonator going forward, you're hitting weakness against Metagross GX. Now, Metagross is a nice niche Pokemon at the moment. It's seeing a little bit of play. But when Gardevoir GX comes out, that's going to be huge, or at least we think it is. Which means that Metagross will become more popular as a natural counter. Which means that Turtonator is going to become better as a counter to Metagross. That's one reason it's better. But another huge reason it's better is Kiawe. Kiawe allows you to search your deck for four fire energy, attach them to one of your Pokemon, and end your turn. Now, it does end your turn, so this is really a turn one attack. But what you do here is you use Tapu Lele, you use Wonder Tag to grab Kiawe, then you attach it, and then just end your turn. Especially if you're going first, you can't attack anyway, so doing this to end your turn really isn't such a bad thing. And you've then got five energy on the field turn one and let's follow through these energy attachments let's say you've got a turtonator in the active turtonator on the bench what you do is you attach one energy to the turtonator on the bench and then you key our way four energy onto the active turtonator turn two you put a second energy on the turtonator on the bench use bright flame with the active turtonator discarding two energy and you've probably taken a ko there and you've now got an active turtonator with two energy one more to use bright flame and a benched turtonator with two energy one more to use bright flame so in theory over the next two turns you just need to attach from your hand and you can get two more bright flame attacks off and this is why kiawe helps turtonator if you draw into an energy every turn if you kiawe turn one then all you need to do is kiawe once 
and you get free bright flames on consecutive turns without ever having to accelerate any extra energy. Now, you can accelerate extra energy. You can use Max Elixir, giving that Turtonator is a basic, but you shouldn't need to here. As a side note, you can also use Fighting Fury Bout to put him up to 230 HP. That could work if you're using Volcanium to hit the numbers, but I still think Choice Band is so good here to allow you to KO any basic EX or GX without having to muck about using Volcanion. Speaking of Volcanion, he is crucial to this strategy because 190 is good, but if you're against a whole bunch of Pokemon that can withstand that hit, you're probably going to lose the game. So something like an Alolan Ninetales has 210 HP. And let's be clear about this. You are not going to be able to Tapu Lele for a Kiawe turn 1, and then Tapu Lele for a Kakui turn 2, and Tapu Lele for a Kakui turn 3. You are going to need consistency. You're going to need to draw cards. Maybe with Shaymin EX in the format, you can afford to just be using Kakui and Kiawe every turn, but you cannot be doing that when you're just using Tapu Lele. You need to draw cards as well. Now, do remember that you're going to be needing to get energy in your hand to attach to Turtonator and to discard with Steam Up, so playing something like Professor's Letter is going to be very important here. But the key thing here is you're hitting 190 with a Choice Band, one Steam Up to 20, there's all your Stage 1 GXs, even the really quite bulky Alola Muck, two Steam Ups is 250, that gets absolutely everything. And here's another key thing that makes Turtonator better after rotation than before rotation, Hex Maniac is going away. Now, your opponent can still block basic abilities. They can use Garbodor that blocks all abilities. They can use Alolan Muck to turn off basic abilities. But Silent Lab has rotated, and crucially, Hex Maniac has rotated. So there is no take a KO while playing a Hex Maniac, so your opponent cannot steam up to get the KO back. Either they are blocking abilities... Or they aren't blocking abilities, and for a lot of decks, it means they won't be blocking abilities. That is amazing. You also should consider Baby Volcanion here. Hey Nick, but this is a little bit too slow and kind of defeats the object of this. You don't want to be using Baby Volcanion to attach energy from your discard. No, ladies and gentlemen. Power Heater is too slow. This is Kiawe. To be honest, the better use for Baby Volcanion here really is as a non-GX attacker, especially if you can get a cheeky KO on some water decks, maybe free Steam up to KO a Lapras with a one prize attacker. And of course then, it's all about adding energy to hit the numbers. Choice Band for 190 gets basics, Kakui gets stage 1, but we don't want to rely on that because you're not going to be able to use it every turn, but similarly playing 1 or 2 for when you are playing against ability lock decks is quite crucial. It could be kind of fun. Like I've said, it is really Volcanion here that you're using to add the damage. Now, I've already laid out the numbers for Kiawe and all of that. Sometimes you might need extra energy and you've got two options. You can use Turtonator's GX attack Nitro Tank to get five energy back from the discard. You can always use a Kiawe, put something like a Volcanion in the active because it only gives up one prize, and then use a Kiawe to get more energy in the mid to late game. Essentially here, you're aiming for free attacks, at least against GX focus. Focus decks, free attacks will win you the game here, so you're really focusing on having free of those Bright Flame attacks, and like I've said, in theory, if you don't miss an energy attachment, one Kiawe will do it nicely. Against non-GXs, it's going to be a little bit more awkward. Hopefully you can outspeed them, but the problem is that discarding two energy per turn with Bright Flame could be a slight issue, but there's plenty of other options here. You can use Shell Trap to get some cheeky KOs, and especially when combined with Steam Up, free Steam Up's 110 and then you're using Shell Trap, it could be kind of fun. You could use non-EX Volcanion, or you even could use Volcanion EX. You will just need to use some switching cards, because although you don't discard energy, you can't use it the following turn. 
Now, at this stage, some of you might be thinking, hang on a second, Ross. We've had Turtonator for a little while now. And, and if anyone watches my stream at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio, go follow, you'll know I am a huge fan of Turtonator Volcanian in Expanded. Why is it all of a sudden going to be massively better in Standard? There are two main reasons. Number one, Kiawe. In Expanded, you've got Blacksmith. Blacksmith is great for getting that energy onto Turtonator. We don't have it in Standard, but that's okay, especially in the early game. Kiawe is better. Number two, Hexmaniac is rotating, meaning it is significantly more difficult for your opponent to ability lock you, to get rid of those abilities. That is the key here. The combination of Kiawe coming out and Hexmaniac leaving means Turtonator is really set up to be a great, great deck after the rotation. I mean, if you take something like Gardevoir GX as being really good, well, you can go down to one energy per Turtonator here, and it really is going to be difficult for Gardevoir to get the KO. Even with a choice band, there needs to be five energy total between a Gardevoir and a Turtonator for Gardevoir to get the KO. So if you leave one energy on a Turtonator, and I know that goes slightly against the attachments we said earlier, but you might need to play slightly differently, you know, against something like a Gardevoir, that's going to be four energy for them. Which means even if they attach a Fairy and a Double Colorless in one turn, they're not getting the KO, and that's if they've got a choice band. And a lot of Gardevoir decks, because because they can add extra damage from energy, are going to be playing few or no choice bands. In which case, this could be a very, very fun deck indeed. Although do remember that you will need either three steam ups or a choice band and two steam ups to get the KO on Gardevoir. I'm not going to sit here today and say this has got an amazing Gardevoir matchup. I'm saying it's set up to deal with Gardevoir better than a lot of decks are, and it's a basic, not a stage two. Now, there are some other cards you should be thinking about when considering to play Turtonator. I will be quick, but you need to know these ones. Firstly, you need to be playing Field Blower. Garbodor is going to be an issue. Garbodor decks are going to see play. They're going to be playing the Ability Lock Garbodor as well. You are going to need Field Blower here because Steam Up is great. And yes, I know you can get easy KOs on Garbodor, but you need to be getting easy KOs on stuff like Drampa and Espeon here. Pokemon Catcher, I think, is going to be a good card in this deck. If you can't use Volcanion to steam up, you're going to need to be taking free GX KOs anyway. And one alternative here, if you can't use steam up to get a KO, then you can use something like a Pokemon Catcher to take a KO on something like a Tapu Lele on the bench. So if you can't get rid of the active this turn, you can play a Catcher to KO something while you're waiting to draw into your Field Blower. You could also use Guzma here, but again, if we're really relying on stuff like Kiawe and maybe Kakui, you're going to play Guzma, but Pokemon Catcher is not your only supporter for the turn. Switches are also going to be key here. Because if you've got all your energy on your Turtonators, then that means your opponent can Guzma up a Volcanion and strand it in the active. But there's likely to be some turns where you don't have enough energy on the active Turtonator, but you do have enough energy on the bench Turtonator, so you're going to need to switch. Although, Guzma will also work here quite nicely as well. Guzma's going to be a great card. Honestly, I think Turtonator is meh. At the moment, Volcanion really is the deck with maybe a Turtonator or two teched into it. But after the rotation, the combination of Kiawe coming in and Hex Maniac going out, as well as some very good matchups, I think Turtonator could be a great top tier deck. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen, or at least you heard it here. But if you disagree, that's what the comment section is there for. Go nuts, be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus pods, jump the queue to play me on stream, etc., then go check out patreon.com slash ptcgradio. The most important thing as always, look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.